Hello, Perception Trainers people, and welcome back to another video. So in the last video, we were saying, okay, or I was saying, it was me. Uh, I'm coming out of the shame closet. I was abused in my childhood. I realized that I have grown up with a mother who has a personality disorder that blocked her from being able to love me and that it caused a lot of damage in my life and being able to finally see that what I went through was abuse and that what I went through was trauma and that so much of what was wrong with me wasn't me being bad but me responding to what happened in my childhood and responding to the conditioning that then I carried on as what I thought was reality for the rest of my t teenage years and into my adulthood that that is what happened so now in this video I want to assure you and to kind of get deeper into some of these concepts that first and foremost this is now not now going to be a parent bashing channel and this is not going to be a me bashing my mother channel and this is not even me blaming her because part of what I have learned in these last this last year and a half and and for my whole life as I was the way that I was or whatever that her that that the abuses that I faced in my childhood from my mother but also from my church and also from society in general just school the media all of these things the 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 conditioning that t told me that who and what I was was wrong and bad that I needed to be different that there was something fundamentally wrong with me and broken with me that I couldn't fit into society and I couldn't fit into the expectations that were being placed on me and that there was something fundamentally broken and wrong with me that I had an eating disorder that I had anxiety that I had depression that I was a workaholic that I was so anxious and had so much self-hate and thought that I just the only point of me was to help others and that if I wasn't doing that I may as well just go bury myself in a ditch and I didn't deserve to have any resources and I didn't deserve the air I breathed because it sh should have gone to someone else. That that all wasn't my fault. But at the same time, it wasn't my mother's fault. It's not society's fault. It's not the church's fault. It's not government's fault. It, it's, this is collective misunderstanding. We are living in a world where we are collectively ignorant. And this is that, you know, that quote of, we shouldn't confuse malice with ignorance. And what I'm starting to see in my own journey and in my own exploration of this and in, and in what it has taken for me to be able to f take responsibility for myself and truly get to these places where I'm healing to the degree that I'm not coping with my neurosis. I'm not coping with eating disorder thoughts and just not acting on them. I'm not coping with my anxiety and just pushing through and doing it anyways. I'm not coping with my depression and my self-hate and my workaholicism and just learning different habits to control these behaviors. But where I no longer have those thought patterns, where I can look at my anxiety and I can get the message and I can change my life so that anxiety doesn't exist that way anymore. Where I'm actually able to make actual change in my life. And I know that that can even in this day and age sound mythical, like an actual change where that problem is just no longer a problem. Where I'm getting to that point where these things are, I'm able to actually move forward in a way where those old problems aren't problems anymore. I don't have those problems, I have it, and, and it's not that they went away, it's that I sorted it out, I got my need met, I figured out what I needed, I figured out what was missing, I figured out where the hole was, I figured out where the misalignment was, and I changed enough to get my need met, that I no longer need to cope, that I no longer need to self-sabotage, that I no longer need to scapegoat because those things were not the problem, they were the symptom of the problem. And I was starting to be able to get at the actual root, what do I need, what do I want, what's missing here, what's out of alignment here that I can change so that I don't have that pain anymore. Getting there, what I've learned about getting there is again, that we are living in a world where everyone is doing the best they can with what they know. 
everybody is doing the best they can with what they know. Everybody who is locked in a place of abuse towards someone else, including my mother who did abuse me, she is locked in that because of her own shame, because of her own fear, because of her own trauma and the abuse that she suffered in her childhood from, again, this world that she lives in that is totally out of alignment with how humanity functions. And all, all of the abusers on the planet, if you go back into their history, you're going to see that they were abused, that they were treated in some way that led them to be the way that they are. And that no one is consciously choosing to be an abuser. And, and when I say consciously choosing, I mean even the people who appear to be choosing to be abusive, choosing to hurt and harm others because that definitely exists on this planet right now. There are people out there who it very much looks like that you're consciously making a choice to do something that, that is causing a disadvantage to someone else for your own gain. And we can see that you are aware that you are going to be hurting somebody when you do what you're going to do and you're thinking that you're going to get something from that and you're choosing to do it. We can see that. But to me, that's not a conscious choice, as in they're not conscious of the actual reality, the actual effect of that choice. They are conscious of a very limited, I'm going to do what I'm going to do right now and I'm going to get what I want and then I'm going to be happy. They're aware of that, but they are not conscious of the repercussions of living in a world where we're all one and we're all connected, where you are cutting your nose off to spite your face, where you're sacrificing the liver for the kidney, not recognizing that the kidney is dependent upon the liver. And so what I'm trying to get across here is that this journey that I have been on of coming out of my conditioning from my childhood, where I believed that I was the lowest piece of scum that ever existed, where I was literally so stressed out that I went into menopause at 15. Okay, let's, we, this was biological. I'm not claiming abuse and then having no proof for my abuse. You don't go into menopause at 15 because you're so stressed out when things are good at home. That's just not a reality. You don't develop and this is another big thing that it's, I'm, I'm going to be challenging the fundamental assumptions that, that current reality has about anxiety, depression, neuroses, um, addictions, eating disorders, and all these things. Because the truth is, we as human beings do not develop these self-harming and abusive tendencies because there's something wrong with us. That is not where this comes from and that's not why it happens. There are no bad people. There are abused people, there are ignorant people, there are unaware people, and we are all conditioned into this society that is very deeply unaware of how the world works, of how reality works, and we are all reacting to that. So my mother treating me the way that she treated me was a reaction to her childhood, which then caused me to react out of abuse, out of alignment, out of, out of alignment, out of, out of alignment -ness. <laughs> That all of this, I came to recognize that no one is to blame here. And at the end of the day, again, no one is evil. I just, I, I haven't seen it. I, and I am someone who was raised by someone who other people could easily look at her and just say, she's a bad person. The way that she treated her children makes her a bad person. She looked me in the eye several times in my childhood and told me, no one is ever going to love you. You're lucky you have me because no one is ever going to love you. And I was so ashamed 
to share my struggle and to share my vulnerability and to share the things that I've been through because she indoctrinated me that if I told anyone about what I went through, if I told anyone about my pain, if I told anyone about my shame, if I told anyone about what I was experiencing, that they would also just think I was awful and that support and help wasn't available because anyone who heard what I had to say about myself was going to look at me and be like, yeah, you're terrible. All of this is happening because of you and you just need to, you need to change. So I learned how to never ask for help and how to never expose myself until I looked like I had everything all together because it was fundamentally assumed that if anyone saw the real me, if anyone saw the struggle that I was going through, if anyone saw my pain, that they would look at it and be like, well, yeah, that, that's gross about you. That's something wrong with you. And that I would just get rejected by everyone the way that she rejected me. And so, like I'm saying, there are a lot of things that she did. She sabotaged my, my physical health. She literally, at every turn where I was trying to solve the problem that now I know came down from the stress I was under because of the household I live in. Every turn I took to try to fix my diet or to fix my, she would sabotage it. She would, she would stop cooking for me. So then I'd start cooking for myself. As a teenager who had so many other things on my plate that I needed to be doing, like all my extracurricular activities and being a straight A student and having a job because I needed to be perfect for her. And then she's like, well, okay, well, I'm not gonna cook for you anymore. And I'm not gonna do any of these things for you anymore. And so then I would start doing it and she'd be like, okay, well, you make the kitchen a mess. You don't clean up properly, but she'd never teach me how to clean. So she could just constantly yell at me for how I was cooking for myself and making a mess and not cleaning it up properly. And so, like I'm saying, some of these things that I'm gonna share about what I've been through would easily be able to be like, wow, she's just a bad person. But the truth is she's not, she's a hurting person. She's, she's a person who, again, was deeply abused in her childhood. And her reactions to me, her, her, her paradigm of what she wanted in life and what she wanted out of a child and what she wanted out of children and what she wanted didn't match reality. It didn't match what actually having kids is about, where you have to sacrifice yourself and where you don't get to just do what you want to do all day long and the, your children aren't just there to, to validate you and make you feel good about yourself. And, and she couldn't see that and she couldn't navigate that and she couldn't become aware of any of that because that would have awakened too much of her own shame and, and all of these things that she thought was wrong with her and all of these things that she was trained were wrong and bad about her and all of this and that would have op opened such a can of worms that she had to blame me. She had to scapegoat onto me. She had to abuse me in order to protect herself. And that was coming from pain, not from being evil, not from being bad. That was coming from ignorance and not understanding what she needed, what she was really struggling with, what was actually hurting her. She didn't have awareness of that. So she was projecting it onto me, not consciously. She didn't know she was projecting it onto me. All she knew was I'm feeling attacked and when I'm feeling attacked, I attack. When I'm feeling attacked, I attack. So that's what I'm saying. She, it looked like she was making a conscious choice to manipulate me. It looked like she was making a conscious choice to sit at the foot of my bed and tell me every night that it's my fault the kids don't like me and it's all this, but it wasn't. It was, that was just her nervous system responding to threat like an animal. It was just, she was in a state of fear and she just lashed out because that's all she knew to do. That was her nervous system. That was her level of awareness. And so, and the greater picture of this, that this is what this channel is now going to be about, is that we need to start to become mature enough. I had to be mature enough to be able to hold both of these paradigms at once. That I needed to admit to myself that what she did hurt me. I needed to be able to admit to myself that she was abusive 
and that all of my neuroses and all of my self-sabotage and all of my scapegoats and all the things, my anxiety and all the things that I thought were wrong with me and my inability to learn and my feeling scared and not knowing how to figure things out for myself and my people pleasing and my codependency and all this stuff came from having been abused. I didn't choose these things for myself. So this, this being a massive revelation that I didn't choose to be anxious. I didn't choose to have an eating disorder. I, again, I wasn't making a conscious choice. And that's where I'm saying, I understand the difference between a true conscious choice and a choice from as much as we are seeing at the time choice. So again, even in my eating disorder, for a long time, I got to a place where I was strong enough not to diet anymore. I just made it a hard line no more cutting calories, I'm not allowed to do that anymore, no more increasing exercise, I'm not allowed to do that anymore, doesn't matter how much I want to do it, it's just a bright line, no. And I had my sister, she would look at my chronometer every day and see that I was eating, and there was just no more cutting calories, there was no more adding exercise, there was no more doing any of these things. But I still wanted to. I still hated my body. I would just sit here and have gained weight and know that I wasn't allowed to do anything about it, and then just feel awful. And I was like, I am not choosing to feel this way. I am not choosing to hate myself for this. If I could choose to not have this be a part of my life, if I could choose to not have this anxiety, if I could choose to just be relaxed and trust that everything's gonna work out, if I could choose to just not be depressed, if I could just choose to like myself, and assume that I'm good enough, no matter what my body looks like, of course I would choose that. Of course I would make that choice. And now, and when I got to these places where I was able to control my behavior to the point of I'm not acting on any of my neurotic thoughts anymore, but I still have all these neurotic thoughts, it was, that's when I was starting to see that like, this is a reaction to something. This is a reaction to something. So being able to hold that and to go through what is required to actually integrate that and heal from that, which is anger, sadness, blame, projection, getting mad at this person who abused me, who was an adult when I was a child and who had complete control over me. And I have no problem, so again, red red flag for all the spiritual people. I have no problem admitting that as a child, I was completely a victim to my mother. I was completely a victim to my church. I was completely a victim to my society. And I have no problem admitting that every other person on this planet, when you were a child, you were a victim. You were a victim because you didn't and I didn't have the mental capacity the physical capacity, the spiritual capacity, the emotional capacity to make things better for myself when they were not good. I did not have the capacity to meet my own needs if my parents didn't meet them for me. I did not have the capacity to understand that perhaps there were things about me that were totally in alignment with who I am and completely right and completely integral to my living my purpose that were immature or were misunderstood by the society I was indoctrinated into. I didn't have the capacity to say, okay, it's not me that's wrong and bad. They just don't understand. It's just, this is just a misunderstanding. They're telling me I can't be how I am and I can't be who I am and I can't do what I am not because I'm evil and wrong and bad. No, it's just that they don't understand. I didn't have the capacity to do that. All I was able to do as a child was see that my needs get met from the outside. That is truth, reality, fact. I did not have the capacity to meet my own needs. I did not even have the capacity to be aware of my own needs as a child. It was fully the responsibility of my caretakers and my society to meet my needs in my childhood. And if that is not the definition of being a victim, 
I don't know what is. So if we can start with that, to admit that absolutely as children we are victims. We are victims to our environment. We are victims to our caretakers. And again, even more so than being physically victim, like they can withhold food, they can withhold uh, shelter, they can withhold whatever. At the same time, even more importantly, I was a victim in my childhood to the conditioning, my perception of reality, my programming for how I perceived what reality is, what is good and bad, what is right and wrong, what pain means, what pleasure means, what emotions mean, how to learn, what to do when I'm co confronted with a desire I don't know how to get met, what to do when I'm confronted with making a mess, making a mistake, and needing help to figure things out, what to do with all of these things, again, fully dependent upon my caregivers to teach me these things. So not only was I physically dependent upon my caregivers, my conscious mind, my brain that was in a state in from zero to seven, where it's literally being programmed for how to understand reality, for how to live, for what is right and wrong, it's being programmed, was victim to the programming that my parents were giving to me was a victim to the programming that my society was giving to me. And, and being able to admit that is not a disempowering thing. Because I know in the spiritual world and in self-help, and it, it's never admit that you're a victim. Never look at yourself as a victim. Never, ever, 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 ever let yourself go into victim mentality because that is the worst thing you can do and that's not spiritual and it's going to keep you stuck in all this. Okay, I understand that. But we have to, again, mature a little bit to be able to see a bigger picture. I had to mature a little bit to be able to see a bigger picture because I can tell you that in my experience, admitting to myself that there was ever anything wrong with anything anyone else did, that everything wasn't just my fault and my responsibility, was my number one indoctrinated thing to never do. Because to blame my mother, that was not allowed in my household. To blame my church, that was not allowed in my household. If anything was wrong with me, it was me. If anything was wrong with her, it was me. If I couldn't do what I needed to do, it was my fault. If I reacted badly when I did what I was supposed to do, it was my fault. Everything was my fault. And I was able to also, you know, who are you to complain? You have food. You're a white privileged female who got educated, who is not being religiously persecuted, who gets to, you get to wear whatever you want, you get to do whatever you want, you have, you're not being persecuted by the police, you're not being uh, racially profiled. I, I looked at my own condition and would constantly just tell myself, you have no right to complain. You have no right to ever, ever, ever admit to yourself that you were a victim to anything. Because look at how much worse everyone else's life is. And I use that as a defense to admitting what I had been through. And doing so prevented me from ever being able to figure out why I was actually struggling the way that I was struggling and what I needed to do to fix it. So this is the big key that I learned. Admitting that I was a victim as a child admitting that, yeah, my life is not the worst in any way. So many people on this planet have it so much worse than me, and that's absolutely true. But that doesn't mean that what I went through didn't happen, okay? Just because someone falls 10 stories and I only fell five doesn't mean my arm didn't get broken. Just because the person that fell from 10 stories got two legs broken and an arm broken, doesn't then say, well, you only fell from five feet, you only broke one arm, it, you don't need any help. You can just go along. That's how I was acting. It was like, because there are so many people out there who got worse damage than me, I'm just gonna hobble along with my broken arm 
and then wonder why I can't live to my highest potential. I can't, I can't express and do as much as I know that I'm capable of. Why I have these neuroses, why I have these coping mechanisms. Because I'm telling myself that my injuries didn't exist because they weren't as bad as everyone else or it's just my fault, it's just there's something wrong with me. So being able to say, no, 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 I was a victim and I was abused and my abuse exists in a vacuum for me, just like everyone else out there. Whatever scapegoats, coping mechanisms, self-sabotage, you're not able to live up to your potential, you know you have these neuro neurotic things that are holding you back, anxiety, depression, all of these things that I went through, all these things that, that we're all going through, it's not that there's something wrong with you. You are reacting to an injury, to yourself, that you don't know happened, you didn't get your needs met, you were abused in some way, and this is a reaction. It is a reaction. And so being able to admit to myself that I'm reacting to the victim mentality of my childhood was part of this. And like I say, being sad for myself, feeling sorry for myself, blaming my mother, blaming society, blaming him, just being so angry and so resentful and letting all of that emotional stuff up and out was the first step in healing. So here's what I've learned about the vibrational scale, okay? It is a misunderstanding that anger, sadness, victim mentality are low vibrations and we need to choose not to be in those and we just need to be in love. That is not what that actually means. What I have discovered for myself is again, first things first, I was a victim as a child. That is not debatable. No one can tell me that I was capable of fixing everything that was out of alignment in my childhood and I just didn't do it. That I had the capacity to know that what my mom was teaching me about my self-worth, that what my mom was teaching me about the point of me as a person, that one by church was teaching me about what was right and wrong, and that I shouldn't try to figure out why anything was wrong or what was going on. I should just pray and ask God to take it away from me. That uh, my anxiety and my depression were a reaction to knowing that things were out of alignment and that I needed to learn and that things in me were being squashed and that I wasn't being allowed to be my real self, that I wasn't being allowed to play, that I wasn't being allowed to express myself, that I needed uh, mental and emotional stimulation that I wasn't getting because my mother neglected me. I didn't have awareness over any of that, nor did I have control over any of that as a child. And that is just fact. And neither did anybody else. So first things first, this idea that we are making ourselves a victim when we admit that we were victim as children. No, we are not. We are admitting the fact that as children we were victim. And that our perception especially, we were victims to the perceptions of those around us. And that formed how we saw ourselves, how we saw the world, and then all the habits we built from there. And that's, again, where our neuroses and our self-sabotage and our coping and our anxiety and our not being able to solve problems, that's where that came from. Our conditioning that is out of sync with real reality, not knowing how to learn, not knowing how to accept and embrace who and what we are and figure out how to make that work in reality, instead constantly trying to just be what everyone wants us to be so that we will get our needs met. Because again, I was dependent upon my, pa my parents to meet my needs. I couldn't just be myself and risk rejection. As a child, that was death. To be rejected from my, my caregivers was to have them not meet my need, to not try to conform to the expectation that my mom had of me, that my church had of me, that, w that society had of me. I didn't have the capacity as a three-year-old to just buy my own food if my mom decided she didn't want to feed me that day because she was pissed at me. I didn't have the capacity to love and nurture myself as a four-year-old and to just go and play creatively even if mom gets mad at me for making a mess. I didn't have that. I had that need 
And if she didn't meet it, it didn't get met. And this is the other big thing that I c came to realize. It's like hunger. We're, we're hungry because our body needs nutrition. When we don't feed ourselves when we're hungry, the need doesn't go away. You don't just get over it and not need nutrition anymore. What actually happens is you start to become deficient in nutrition that you need, and then what happens? The body starts to malfunction. The longer the body goes without getting what it needs, the more it's going to malfunction because it doesn't have the tools it needs to do its job. And that is what sickness is. So why can we understand that with the body, but not understand that with our emotional needs and our spiritual needs and what we needed as children, that if we are reacting, if we are exhibiting sickness, eating disorder, sex addiction, any kind of addiction, uh, anxiety, depression, listlessness, we don't know where we're supposed to be doing and what we're supposed to be doing, we feel constantly not good enough, all of these things, if we are exhibiting sickness, why are we not then saying, okay, what's not being met? Why are we looking at these things as the problem? That is what is crazy in our society right now, that we look at an eating disorder as the problem. We look at anxiety as the problem. We look at depression as the problem. We look at addiction as the problem. We look at cyclic racing, anxiety, thoughts, fear of death, fear of, of not having a partner, fear of not enough. We look at people who abuse others. We look at the, the way that the world is set up right now where people are constantly being victimized by other people who are constantly overtaking their power. And we look at that as the problem instead of that's a result of the problem. So this is what this channel is gonna be about, is that we need to be able, I, I'm just gonna share my ex experience with admitting to myself that I didn't get what I needed. That what was wrong with me was a symptom of not getting my needs met, of not getting my needs met. It was a symptom of not being able to be my real self. It was a symptom all of these neurotic things that I was doing, all of my coping mechanisms, all of my self-sabotage, everything I was trying not to be, everything I was trying to force myself to be that I wasn't, all of the obsessive thinking and all this, that's how I was coping with not having my needs met and then realizing what my needs were, my, my needs for self-expression, my need for understanding how reality works so that I can work within it needing to know how my emotions work, needing to understand what pain and pleasure actually were and what they teach me about life, needing to understand how to learn so that I can continually face that which I don't know and learn something new and evolve, become different, instead of being so afraid that I'm going to look stupid or make a mistake or inconvenience someone that I never do that. I had to learn all that stuff. And that is what takes me out of being a victim and into a state of love because now, as an adult, I have the power to identify where I was mistreated, where I didn't get what I needed, where I didn't get what I wanted. And now, as an adult, I can start to meet my own needs. I can start to reparent myself. So here's the big thing, okay? Yes, I was a victim to my mother. Yes, I was a victim to society. Yes, I was a victim to all of these things in my childhood. That is true. And as I allow myself to look at that, I allowed myself to see the needs that I didn't get met, the things that I needed that didn't happen, all the things that I was angry about, all the things I was upset about, all the things I was sad about. I had to get angry and upset and, 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 and rage-filled and resentful of all that stuff in order to become aware of what was missing. Letting myself get mad at my mom for what she didn't do for me showed me what she didn't do for me. So that I could become aware of like, okay, that's a need that I have. And then working through all the shame and the guilt and the, and the trauma of having that need and feeling like I was a bad person for having that need, right? So learning that I felt like it was a bad thing about me 
that when I am in a state of misalignment, I have an emotional reaction. And when I finally was like, no, that was her fault. I could say, okay, maybe that's not a bad thing about me. Maybe that's actually a really good thing about me. The fact that my emotions are so strong when something is out of alignment, that means I can save myself from being out of alignment. Because if I didn't experience pain, when something was hurting me, it would kill me and I wouldn't know why. Oh, that's the point of pain. Pain isn't bad. Pain isn't a sign that I'm unenlightened. If I'm in pain, that means I'm seeing something that there's a misalignment. So what is causing me pain? Oh, it's my hand on a burner. I didn't even recognize that my hand was on a burner because it was indoctrinated into me to have my hand on that burner. And the answer isn't just to take painkillers, make the pain go away, try and stop the pain because the pain is the problem. No, take my hand off the burner, heal the hand, and then I don't have pain anymore. I don't have to cope with the pain. I don't have to resist my need to take a painkiller every day. As though that's the problem with me. I'm addicted to painkillers. No, I have pain that's constant. I don't know how to fix. And so my only way to deal with it is either learn how to white knuckle it and just be okay with pain all the time or take something to make the pain go away. So now if I actually learn why the pain is happening, well, I got trained that I need to have my hand on the burner and that's what a good person does. Everyone has their hand on the burner. Don't take your hand off the burner. You can't be different than us. And I say, okay, well, I'm going to do it anyways. Oh, everyone rejects me because I'm different. Okay, well, I'm an adult now. I can provide for myself. I can learn to start. And now I have a hand that everyone else doesn't have. And so it looks like when I'm doing all this healing work that I'm becoming this super being who has all these extra capacities. And people always say this to me, Ali, uh, how do you know what you know? How did you learn all this stuff? How are you able to have your life be good and all of these things? Well, I have an extra appendage because I stopped doing what everyone else is doing and I learned to start taking responsibility for myself. So these two things exist together. Being able to admit all of that stuff and going through those emotions showed me where I was out of alignment, where I was trained to be out of alignment, where I was rejecting my real self, all of these things. And as I started to see that, I started to see, okay, well now as an adult, it's not up to my mom to change. It's not up to the reality to change. It's not up to the world to change, to make it better for me. Now as an adult, I can change. And that's what taking true responsibility for yourself is, is finally coming to the point of recognizing that all of your neuroses and all of your scapegoats and all of your self-sabotage and all that stuff is a reaction to not having getting your needs met and a reaction to not even knowing what your needs are and allowing yourself to feel the natural anger, the natural sadness, the natural victimization, the natural projection and the blaming and all of that stuff is a necessary process that allows you to become aware of what you're not even aware that you're not aware of, of who you really are and what you really want. And then you can start to be brave enough to meet those needs within a reality where you have been trained that to have those needs is wrong and bad, that to need that, to want that, to want to do that, to express that makes other people uncomfortable, makes other people hate you, makes other people reject you, makes your caregivers not like you, triggers them. And that you can do it anyways and get rejected and have everyone hate you and all these things. That's what I'm learning, that I can be rejected. The whole world can completely misunderstand me. And now as an adult, it doesn't matter because I can get my needs met and I can provide for myself. I don't, I'm not a child anymore. I'm not dependent upon consensus reality approval for me to survive. And that's the empowerment. And then I can be in a state of love, in a real state of love, which says, I am empowered. That's what a state of love is. I can figure things out for myself. I can solve my own problems. I am not a victim to the people around me liking me and approving of me so that they will give me what I need or they will figure it out for me. We're all codependent. That is the reality of this. 
That is the point. And so in this, we naturally come into a state of love and understanding ourselves and others when we're empowered. All right, so what this means is here and now today, I do not hate my mother at all. I completely love her and I accept her for who and what she is right now. And I can see that she's in a lot of pain and that she's reacting from pain and that she doesn't even understand herself. She doesn't see the way that she's behaving and, and ha the effect that it has on people. She is in such a state of fear, she sees only herself and what she's getting out of it and, and her own pain and how others are serving or not serving her. And like I say, her conscious awareness of reality is small because she's in a state of fear. And that's what a state of fear is. It's lack of awareness. So, and I see this in the world, but so therefore I don't hate her at all. I don't anymore blame her for my life. Because now as an adult, I know that it's my choices now to confront my conditioning, to accept who and what I am, regardless of whether she liked it or not, regardless of whether the church liked it or not, regardless of whether my culture liked it or not. And saying, okay, there are two ways of being. I'm either going to accept and embrace who and what I am and live that and risk rejection, but have the capacity to live and let's see what happens. I'm not going to be dependent on the world approving of me to get my needs met. I'm going to figure out how can I get my needs met even if I'm disapproved of, even if the world doesn't like me. And seeing that that's not really how it works. <laughs> Real reality supports you and, and has supported me. The more that I have embraced my truth and just said, this is who and what I am, and I'm sorry if you like it or don't like it, it doesn't really matter. I'm supported. I'm in this position now where this, this work that I do, I get to just say whatever I want. I'm not dependent on anyone approving of this. And that's proof to me, just for me. No one has to believe me. I'm not asking you to believe me. I'm not asking you to put faith in me. You can absolutely look at me and say everything is different for you and this is all bullshit. That's fine. I'm just telling you my experience is that every time I've stepped into I'm going to embrace who and what I am and take responsibility for what I need and get that need met. Otherwise, it's just going to come out as a shadow because here's the other thing is that I just really, really recognized that I was going to have an eating disorder so long as I believed those things about myself. I was going to have an eating disorder so long as I was conditioned the way that my mom conditioned me to be, so long as I never questioned her reality and so long as I never embraced what I actually wanted and who I wanted to be and what I needed to be. There was no other way. I wasn't, like I said, I could control my behavior all I want. I got to a point many, many years ago where dieting was off the table. I was no longer allowed to cut my calories. I was no longer allowed to change what I was eating. I was no longer allowed to exercise more than I was exercising. I was not, I had to rest more. I was going to take care of myself. And those were my new habits. And I had accountability. I had my sister. I had my husband. They looked. <laughs> they saw what I was eating. They saw all these things. Nothing has really changed in my way of eating for the last five years because I just made a bright line. No more. And so I got to that place. But then I still had all these thoughts of hating myself. I still had all these thoughts of... And, you know, it kind of like shifted into workaholism. So instead of obsessing about my body, I was obsessing about how much work I was doing. And I was just seeing that like, okay, so I can kind of control my behaviors, but it's like whack-a-mole. This isn't working. So what's really going on here? And like I say, then I started to say, okay, now I'm going to have this revelation that maybe my childhood was messed up and I'm going to let myself get really mad and get really sad and not blame myself anymore and to blame her for a bit and to, to, to get upset, to go into victim mode, full blown, 
to recognize how much of a victim I was to her and to society as a child and how much it fucked with my head and made me believe things that are totally not true and how much that was my reality. It was my f fish in water and how it was so scary to believe that that wasn't true because I was dependent on these people in my childhood to take care of me. So if they were wrong, I was fucked. So of course I wasn't going to be able to recognize that. And to let myself recognize that as an adult meant, oh my God, I can't rely on these other people. I can't just become who my mom wants me to be one day and then she'll give me this perfect love and all this provision and, and everything will be fine that I'm looking for. I can't become this perfect person and then God's going to save me. I can't become this perfect person and then all my pain's going to go away because I'm finally loved the way that I want to be loved, which to my nervous system means I'm going to be provided for perfectly. No. Adult life means I have to learn to provide for myself and that life is always going to be changing and there's never going to be a solid security. The security comes from knowing that I know how to figure things out. That when challenges arise, I can face them and I can find success. And that I can be myself, get rejected and still be okay. And I started to face that stuff. And then all of a sudden, I'm so busy living my life that I'm not thinking about my body, that I'm not thinking and obsessing all day long about what I'm doing for other people, that I'm capable of taking actual care of myself and enjoying it for the first time in my life. Because I'm not just sitting there with these constant, this program in my head that who and what I am isn't enough. And like I say, I only got here because I let myself get upset, because I let myself be sad and admit that I was a victim and that none of this was my fault and I wouldn't choose this. And I got mad at her and I blamed her and I did all of that. And then it led me to the place where I was like, okay, and what am I going to do with it now? Because now I'm an adult. I can't go back to childhood, right? I can't go back to my childhood and have her love me the way that I need her to love me. But I can look at how she didn't love me and what hurt me and recognize, okay, that shows me what I did need. And then how can I meet that need for myself now? That is what this was. And that is what puts me in a state of love because now I'm not dependent on her. I'm actually not dependent on her. I may have physically grown out of being dependent on her a long time ago, but mentally and emotionally and spiritually, I still believed I was dependent on her. I still thought I had to become who she wanted me to become because that was my indoctrination. And I think that we are all doing this. To the degree that you have neuroses, to the degree that you have anxiety, to the degree that you have depression, to the degree that you have addictions, to the degree that you have these things that you're obsessed with that you can't get on with your life, that's a symptom of you not getting a need met that you needed to get met in your childhood. And it's just, I say it that blank because I have not seen any evidence of it not being that way. No adult is choosing to hurt themselves. No adult is choosing to hurt other people with actual awareness of the consequences of that. We're all disconnected from our pain. We're disconnected from our emotions. We're disconnected from that which would show us the actual consequences of what we're doing. And so we're not making conscious choices. We're making very limited consciousness choices. My mom is making choices from a very limited perspective. I was making choices from a very limited perspective. And so, like I say, as I've allowed myself to do the scary things of embracing who and what I am. So I need to make noise. I'm not an organized A type personality who's just happy to sit in my room all day by myself. That's not my personality. That is who my mom wanted me to be. And so long as I was trying to be that person, I was going to be obsessed with my body. I was going to be obsessed with trying to make myself smaller. Think about that. As I started to say, okay, you know what? No, this isn't even about my body. This is about the fact that I am not the small person my mom wanted me to be. I'm big. I'm shiny. I want to be out on the internet. I want to make videos. I want to write. I want to interact. I want deep conversation. I want, this is who I am. And I'm either going to embrace that 
and like I say, run the risk of everyone in my life rejecting me. Because again, I really believed that what she rejected in me was what everyone was gonna hate in me. She trained me that if I ever exposed myself for who and what I was, that the world would hate me the way that she did. And so learning to get over that and to be that anyways was the medicine. Learning to, to embrace who I am. So one other example, I love figuring out how people work. I love human psychology. I'm writing books. I've got this mystery school. I don't want to be a coach. I don't like working one-on-one -on -one with people. And I used to feel so guilty about that, that I want to make these videos and I want to make these programs and, and all this stuff, but it doesn't seem to be helping that I'm just giving all this information. People need one-on-one -on -one attention. So it's wrong and bad about me that I'm not a coach. Instead of recognizing, no, maybe I'm a coach's coach. Maybe this work that I'm doing is useful for the people who want to work with people, who don't want to have to figure everything out, who want a system and a program and an understanding and all this information for how the human psychology works so that we can actually move forward and figure out who we are and what we're supposed to be doing. And I can disseminate that information to them and they can work with people. So we all work together. Oh, okay. It's not that we all should be exactly everything. It's that I'm a very specific person who has specific strengths, specific weaknesses, and the things that are my weakness, I don't need to do. That doesn't make me wrong and bad. That just makes me a unique individual. And so it's all of this. And, and in the next video, I'm going to be talking about unconditional love within conditional relating because I feel like this is a huge thing that I learned through dealing with abusive people who are hurting to the point where they are they don't have the capacity not to choose to be abusive and that's what we're going to talk about in the next video but just for this I just want to say admitting that we were victims in our childhood is not unspiritual it's reality it's complete reality admitting that our consciousness was victim to our upbringing and that we learned to hate ourselves and that we learned to deny our emotions, to not understand what pain and pleasure is, to resist learning because it got us rejected and it got us blamed and it got us shamed and it got us abandoned and it got us saved and rescued instead of being taught when we made a mess, when we didn't understand something, when we had emotions, where we got scapegoated, that it's something wrong with the child if they're throwing a tantrum instead of there's something wrong with the environment, they're not getting their needs met, where we were trained, we're not allowed to be who and what we are because mom and dad don't like that or society doesn't like that, that all of that came from ignorance. It's no one's fault, but it didn't mean it doesn't, it doesn't mean that didn't hurt us. And it doesn't mean that we weren't completely victim to that. And I understand the spiritual we choose our parents, you actually did choose that, da 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 da. Okay, fine, whatever. You want to hold on to that? I'm not going to try and convince you. If you really want to move forward, we have to understand we are all in a victim state. That that vibrational scale is not a choice we're making. That's a natural thing that happens when we go from the victim state of our childhood to being angry so that we can be empowered so that we can be sad, so we can blame, so we can project, so we can figure out what we didn't need or what we didn't get and we can get awareness. And then through that awareness, we can start to meet our own needs. And then when we get our needs met, we naturally exist in a state of love. It's not a choice you make. We don't choose love. That is a natural place we end up at when we are no longer in a victim state. And we are no longer in a victim state when we have taken our power and changed so that we're getting our needs met, right? We don't become not hungry by just deciding not to be hungry. When you have a stomach ache because you haven't eaten, when, you're, when you start to notice that your organs aren't functioning properly because you didn't get, you're not getting nutrients that they need to function, you don't just decide to heal your liver. You don't just decide to not have a stomach ache anymore. You have to feel that stomach ache, feel the pain, feel the discomfort, 
feel the pain and the discomfort of not having that food that you're craving. Noticing the craving. Okay, eating that food. Starting to get those nutrients. Then all of a sudden you don't have the pain anymore and your body functions properly. You don't have to try to be in a state of health. When you are getting your needs met, you're naturally healthy. When you are getting your needs met, listen to me. When you are getting your needs met, you are naturally in a state of love. You are naturally in a state of empowerment. You are naturally in a state of awareness of what you need and how to get those needs met within our society where we are all connected and you don't need to hurt anyone else to get those needs met. That is your natural state. If you're not there, it's not because you're choosing not to be there. You're not choosing to be angry. You're not choosing to be sad. You're not choosing to be in a victim state. You were in a victim state. You were victimized and you were programmed. And now you have that programming. So even though you're an adult who can go to a job and get money for yourself and you can physically support yourself, your nervous system doesn't understand that. And the degree to which you're not being your true self, you're not actually able to express your whole real self, is the degree to which you will have neuroses anxiety, depression. So even though you're working a job and you have the money and all this stuff, you're never going to feel good in it because it's not who you are. And you're not then choosing to be depressed or choosing to be anxious. Those are all reactions to the fact that you're living out of alignment with yourself. And that's not your fault, but you have to let yourself feel that and then go through the process of feeling all those emotions, the anger, the resentment, the hating your family, the hating your upbringing, the hating your church and all this stuff, you have to go through it so that you will become aware of what you want it to be and then you will become brave enough and empowered enough to be your real self anyways and see then that you are capable. When you're really getting your needs met for being your real self, for learning how to learn, for being able to express, when you're really in that state of empowerment, you won't need your coping mechanism anymore. You won't need the scapegoat. You won't need the self-sabotage. The anxiety won't be there anymore. You won't have to fight with it. And you won't have to try to be in a state of love. You won't have to fight with your fear all the time because you will understand because all fear is, is a lack of awareness. And we don't fight lack of awareness with just choosing to feel different. We don't choose to feel different. We embrace how we feel and we choose to behave differently when we understand why what we're doing is making us feel the way we're feeling because we were programmed to be that way. It's not my fault, but it's my responsibility. And that's scary. It's very scary to really come to these points where your conditioning is at complete odds with your authentic truth and to choose your authentic truth and to see what happens as an adult now who can get your own needs met and you actually will in your nervous system then learn that you can be rejected and that you won't die and then you will feel empowered to be your real self and then you will be in a state of love because you're not in a state of dependency we are all right now stuck in victim mentality because we are all still conditioned to believe that if the world isn't approving of me, I'm not going to get my needs met because that's how it was when we were children. We have never evolved from that. So we have to let ourselves go through the vibrational scale naturally to become aware of what we need so that we can meet our own needs as an adult. That's what that really is. That's what the emotional vibrational scale really means. So if you're in a state of sadness, depression, anger, it's not something wrong with you. That's a state you need to go through so you can recognize what you actually need and then be empowered enough to meet it, that need yourself in a world that told you you're going to die if you do because people are going to reject you and then you won't get your needs met. Do it anyways. See yourself through it. And then you will be in a state of love. So that's what this channel is going to be about. How do we actually live love? What does that actually look like? It looks like the process. It's not choosing to be love. It's choosing to go through the growth process that we need to go through so that we can actually become empowered. That's what this is. That's what I've learned. It's not my mom's fault anymore. It's my job, but I had to go through it all. Everything is required, both and. I can hold both of these things at the same time. So next video, we're going to talk about conditional relating within unconditional love.
Okay.